Joe Joseman, I want to thank you for joining us here this afternoon. Appreciate it very much. Thank you very much, Steve. Okay. Tell us why you're running. Well, I'm running because I was born and raised in Boynton Beach. I was born in Bethesda Hospital. Um, I played Bulldogs um, when I was a little kid. Uh, I was a four-year letterman in high school uh, in Park Vista High School. I also went to college at Florida University. When I decided to run is because I feel like our district in Boynton needs to change. Um, ever since I've been here, we've had the same commissioners back and forth, the same issues that go to commission hearings, not getting addressed. Um, I feel like the community is being held out on. When I say held out on it, they're not getting enough information because the regular politicians now, they, they think they know everything. When you, we, you really don't know everything, you have to go back to the constituents and ask them questions, ask them how they're doing. What's wrong? Is the streets wrong? Is the streets, um, is there potholes? Is there issues in the streets? I'm sorry about that if I'm <laughs> skipping off a little bit. No, um, but I've, um, but uh, tell, I me what, tell, tell me what issues are not being addressed. Perfect. Infrastructure, housing. When Let's start off with housing. A lot of people in my district, because we are a low income district, um, a lot of residents are strapped with home liens on there with the city. The city um, have a lot of liens on some residents that they're being um, pushed out, basically. Um, when kids get these properties, they don't know there's thirty, forty thousand dollars liens that the city itself it's putting on there. So that's an issue. Um, infrastructure. Our roads right now are rated F. That is horrible. We have potholes everywhere. Um, roads are not being maintained like they're supposed to. And the last but not least issue that really, really hurts me is we have we have no grocery stores in our district is a food scarce district um just for us to get something you got to go all the way to walmart that's the distance um my district we um we are we need stores we need grocery stores i want you to do me a favor for the uninitiated give us approximately the boundaries of the district you're describing give sure us, yeah sure my district two basically starts from gateway all the way down to woolbright Okay. Um, so district two, um, right now we have no, um, no, you, no Walmart, no Publix, um, no convenience mm -hmm. store. The only thing we have right now is a dollar is a dollar store, but I feel like we could do a little bit more. You talked about, you talked about potholes and poorly maintained roads, but, uh, please slow down just a second here. I'm so I, sorry. I, I, I couldn't, no, that's all right. I couldn't tell from your description, you know, these might be County roads. These might be state roads, right? And that's why I'm happy you said this because I actually worked in the public works department for five years. Um, some of the roads that I'm actually referring to, they are county, um, they are city roads. Okay. So they're not they're not county roads, the ones I'm referring to. The ones I'm referring to are actually city roads, and I feel like um they're not being maintained. <clears> hmm. <throat> okay. And this this issue of uh, you describing of, of of the city imposing liens on people's primary residence for what kinds of things? What why would the city put a lien on somebody's home? Unpaid unpaid taxes? When, um, it would be code standards like their driveway wasn't up to code. They'll put a lien. Um, if they left the trash out there, they'll put a lien. Not knowing we just came out of COVID, a lot of people are just coming back home. Um, a lot of people that does own property, they're older residents. So they're the ones that's getting strapped with the liens and they're barely making it by. What's your level of confidence and uh, support for the job the mayor is doing in Boynton Beach? Right now, I have to, I have to be honest, the mayor is doing the best he can. Um, he's, he's actually trying to do everything he can for district two and trying to get us grocery stores, trying to get us housing. Um, but right now, I just feel like the leadership in District 2 does not want to follow along and help the community out. Okay. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to open the floor to my colleague, Pat Beal. Go ahead, Pat. I, you know, one of the first things I think we need clarity on is your address, you know. And uh, can, you, can you address some of the, uh, you know, some of the issues that have been brought up here and give us some confidence as to your address? Sure, Pat. That's why I actually emailed um, Daniel today with my driver's license, um, all my information, my two water bill. All, Pat, all my life, even when I get pulled over, 
I have to show everything I have. Um, I have to show my driver's license. I got to show where I live. So this is nothing new to me. That's the reason I sent all that information to Daniel. Uh, Pat, Pat, I, I didn't forward this on to you, but for the record, uh, I did get a copy of a driver's license from Mr. Josman that expires in 2028, and there being an eight-year uh, limit on, on driver's licenses. Uh, that would suggest to me that this driver's license was taken in 2023 years ago, and it has the District 2 address on the driver's license. Mm -hmm. So how so, do you explain- I'm so sorry to interrupt you. I'm so, yeah, go on, I'm sorry, Pat. <laughs> no, that's okay. Well, uh, you know, one of the other questions I had, uh, you had mentioned flooding as one of your concerns. And although this is only peripheral to flooding, um, you know, the town has been like the grant recipient on behalf of, I think, three coastal resilience partnership, um, you know, uh, outlays. And I think that there was a report that said that it looked like there were 32 strategies specific to Boynton that were recommended. Do you have any idea how many of those 32 have been implemented or what? or where they are right now and, and how you would hurry them along if they're not implemented? And that's, Pat, thank you so much for asking that question. We have been asking our commissioners those questions and got nothing back. Um, right now on Federal Highway, that's where the flooding is prone to. Some of our businesses, Banana Boat, I'm sorry to mention them, but I have to, they're a business. Um, they're, every time there's a, a hard rain, they're flooded. Mm -hmm. um they can't you can't go in the banana boat you can't go um residents can't go out it's, it's chaos and these mm -hmm. issues has been addressed to the commissioners they just been ignored because these guys been at the they've been there already um they're not gonna they're just here for the title now mm -hmm. so i just feel like with, with flooding we're not addressing it we're just ignoring it because of the district that we're in yeah i also want to um circle back to the issue of the liens has the uh, has the city made any accommodations for people, homeowners in particular, who may have racked up substantial amounts of liens? No. Um, as I'm doing door knocks, right door knockings right now, I'm getting a lot of information from um, constituents that they got liens. They're like, Joe, I got liens on my property for no reason. Um, I don't know why I have all these liens, but I got this lien on my property for no reason um can you tell me why when i look into it it's usually community standards piled a lot of lean because either they didn't throw out the the, veg the vegetation on time or their bulk trash it's some minute minute issue that needs to be addressed mm -hmm. yeah um with regard to policing i'm wondering if you are comfortable with how policing is being handled in the city in the last, I would say, the last couple of years, and particularly the last year since the incident of the 13-year-old kid who was uh, who was hit. Actually, I'm gonna be honest with you. Policing, I feel like they're getting better. Mm -hmm. um, and the reason I say they're getting better, they have new leadership. Um, mm -hmm. The issues that we were having in policing is a couple bad apples not following policies and procedures um it's not all police that are bad trust me like i told you already pat i'm a young black man i get mm -hmm. pulled over a lot um boynton beach have one of the great police forces but again we have these policies that are not being addressed we don't have a police issue we have policy issue um mm -hmm. and who controls policy is the commission that controls policy Can i feel you like me Sorry, go ahead. Yeah. i feel like we've been lacking on training We've been lacking on reviewing police conduct and just letting things go by. Mm -hmm. And are those the policies you're referring to? As yes, um, one policy I'm referring to that that is that is always ignored. We do not chase in Boynton Beach. We okay. don't. It's dangerous for everybody in the city. We do not chase. Mm -hmm. um, and I feel that policy has not been followed. And as commissioner, I want for us to have a citizens review board on police conduct mm -hmm. just so just so the community can be part of decision makings of policy for police under your <clears throat> under your proposal your idea joe uh who who gets who's who's on the citizen review board and how do you get appointed to it 
Thank you so much. Right. I would do it just like the advisory board. Like I'm on right now, I'm on the CRA advisory board. Um, if my other competitors have issues with my address, I would have never been on the CRA advisory board for over two years. Well, to be on that board, you have to live in the resident. You have to live in Boynton Beach. That's one requirement. Then you would have to show your proof of residence. That's another requirement. So we would ask those requirements for you to be on the citizens board. You have to be a resident of Boynton Beach to be on that board. That board must be elected. You must be elected by a county commissioner. I mean, I'm sorry, by a municipality commissioner. <laughs> sorry about that. All right. By the way, what's the uh, what's the approximate size of the city budget? Bro, right now we're about to hit two hundred million. Um, we've I feel like there's there's been crazy spending. To be honest with you, right now I don't know the exact number, but we in the city are really top heavy. We are not looking at our first responders the way we should be. We're not looking at the work, the sanitation workers as we should be. Um, so the budget right now, I feel like, is more directed to the upper level, um, as you can see, staff in the city, rather than for the community. Um, when you have a high budget like that and you're seeing the salaries that we're paying some some employees, it's, it's, it's crazy. Boyne is the number three employer. A government should not be the number top number five employer. That creates no entrepreneurship. It creates no growth in the community. You're saying that the city is the number three employer in Boynton Beach? Is that what you're saying? It's, I'm saying it's top five, and we shouldn't be. I don't have the exact number, but we're top five of employers in Boynton hmm. Beach. That shouldn't be. Okay. I, I found a story on the Palm Beach Post website. I think it was this morning or last night that the city budget is about $267 million. Exactly. Okay. Um, can you give me Sounds an example? pretty good, Steve. Come on. Okay. I didn't even cheat. Can you give me an example of a specific vote or a decision that the incumbent commissioner has cast where you definitely would have voted differently? The garage. Right now, we are in so much lawsuit with Old School Square. It's not even funny. It's embarrassing. Um, I feel like Commissioner McRae and Commissioner Hay should have did their due diligence with the developer regarding the garage for Old School Square in Boynton Beach. Right now, we are in litigate litigation. Sorry about for the word. <laughs> Right now, we're in litigation um, with the with the developer, and it's a shame because the devel the developer is winning and the community is hurting. Okay. Um, can can I ask real quick? Uh, um, one of your what, speaking of the the residency thing, one of your opponents, Bernard Wright, has actually filed a, a petition in court to have you tossed from the ballot. Is that right? That is correct. He actually has. Uh, my brother's information uh, because me and my brother um, live in the same house. So he don't believe that my brother's my brother. He believes my brother's somebody else that I'm lying about. Um, so he's filed a petition to take me off the ballot um, with the address, with my home address on there. Okay. Um, on, on your questionnaire, one question we asked is, have you ever been charged with or convicted of a misdemeanor felony, including case withheld of adjudication? If so, provide charges, dates, and terms. And you said no. There is no misdemeanor or felony when in I was, the last five years that you have. Uh, in, or, 2000, in 2000, I want to say 2018, I, I had a misdemeanor. Um, okay. I was, you remember, I was driving. Well, I was driving. I got pulled over. The officer took me out the car. They say they found some stuff in the car. I didn't get arrested. I got a citation. They said it was marijuana. You were right cited there, for possession of marijuana less than 20 grams. Is that right? Ex exactly. Okay. And then I was saying to myself, there is no marijuana in the car. They didn't arrest me. Um, I had to take a class. So, again, that's another reason I wanted to get into politics because people that look like me, um, we get treated differently. Um, if they took if they took me to jail, they would have found out that it wasn't marijuana. Um, but they didn't. They just cited me and told me to go home. Well, can you can you tell me what it was that they thought was marijuana? Oh, no. <laughs> All right. No worries. <laughs> no, no, I, I, no, it was actually it was actually um some I, I think it was I I'm gonna be honest with you, I think it was grass. Um, because that day um I was stressing really bad and i was actually working out 
Um, so I think it was from my cleats from me working out and then my attitude with the cops and they thought I was on something. Hmm. Okay. Um, Bernard Wright, who, who filed that, that uh, court to order to try to get you thrown off the ballot as has run for office before uh, several times, a uh, long time activist. Uh, and you're also going up against Woodrow Hay, who's uh, the current city commissioner and Mac McRae, who is the former city commissioner uh, up until uh, um, the when Woodrow Hay took over, I think in 2020. Um, so you're going up against three much Better. more, you know, experienced uh, uh, people here. Even if people have a problem with the current city commissioner, give us a case for why the alternative is not someone who who is more familiar with with the city commission and and has served before and that kind of thing. That's why um, I wanted to recommend. That's why I I boasted about me being on the CRA board for over two years, because I actually been watching these guys and learning. Um, in my district, we have a high pop. We have a great number of African Americans, Haitians, and the way they get treated, the way I get treated, is not fair. I'm gonna be honest with you. Um, we get profiled. I get profiled every day. Um, before I leave, I make sure there's nothing green in my car. I make sure my car doesn't smell funny. It's very intrusive. Um, so I feel that these commissioners are disconnected. You pulled over. <laughs> when was the last time you were pulled over? Let me put it that way. Um, actually, since I've been running for commissioner, I haven't got pulled over yet. Actually, no, no. Um, I got. I said no. No, I haven't been pulled over yet ever since I've been running for commissioner. So I've been very, very lucky right now. Um, but I would say the last time I got pulled over would be last year around August. And I can remember it. Okay. And that was just a, a traffic stop kind of thing? Regular tra traffic stop. Got out the car. They checked the car. Nothing was in the car. Um, they asked me for my ID. They asked me for my driver's license. The standard routine. They brought the canines out. Nothing was there. I mean, the, the the fact that they made you get out of your car and search the car and brought the canines out, that is not actually standard routine as far as say oh. I get pulled over. That's what right. I that's what I was telling with the disconnect. <laughs> I, I, I see. Yeah. So but again, that one I was lucky. Nothing happened. I got in my car, went home. Okay. Thank you. No, thank you, Daniel. So what is your, uh, tell us a little bit about your uh, professional background. What What is your, if you're employed, what is your day job? Where do you work and what do you do? Perfect. Um, I actually worked for the city of Boynton Beach for five years in the public works department. After that, um, I knew, I have a new opportunity in Delray Beach. I'm starting, I started as a chief parking administrator five months ago. I am the chief parking administrator for the city of Delray Beach. Um, so right now I'm working in Delray. <laughs> Oh, okay. Yeah. That's a, that's a, uh, who is your boss? Who's your boss in Delray Beach? Would I get in trouble saying that? I don't know. Uh, well, I mean, well, my public, I, I can call, I can call, I can call city hall and ask city hall that question, but yeah, uh, I'll get it. <laughs> yeah. So that would be, um, uh, uh, Missy Barletto is my public works director. Right. And, um, Mike Corrali would be my deputy director. Okay. So a chief parking administrator, uh, are you are you the person who supervises people who give people tickets? <laughs> yes, parking Steve. tickets. I'm the bad guy. Yes, sir. Okay, no, I'm just I'm just asking. Uh, and and this happens from time to time in any sort of political campaign. Um, but I'm just curious to know how do you right now is a good example. You've obviously got a full-time day job working for a, a local government. How do you balance when you have to do political events nor non-city events during working hours? How do you think, how do you do that? I've been very blessed um, because in college I've worked mm -hmm. two jobs. All my life I worked two jobs. I've never stopped working two jobs. Um, when I worked in the public works department, again I was um, I, I worked security at night. Um, so I've always worked two jobs. This wouldn't be anything hard for me because I actually like helping people. And when you've been put in a bad situation in your life and you think you have nowhere to go, but you do find a window and you actually make something happen in your life, you feel like, hey, I can do this job. I want to help people. When you say 
being put in a bad situation in life. Are you, are you referring to that to yourself personally or just? Yeah, because I had a lot of ups and downs because um, when I was going to college in Florida and University, every time I took I-10, I got pulled over. Every time I took I-10, um, I was driving a white Dodge Magnum. Every time I was going to college, people didn't believe I was in college. All my life, I had to prove myself. And it just makes you mentally um, weak. Sometimes I want to say, I don't know if that's the proper word to say, but at the same time, it makes you grow as a person because you can see so many adversity that you're going against and you're accomplishing your goals. So uh, I hope I made sense because I, ram sure. I ramble a lot. I'm sorry, guys. Is there, is, there, is there a lot of racism in the Boynton Beach Police Department? I can't say that. I have to say it's a policy issue. And the reason for that is because in the Boynton Beach Police Department, I've never been pulled over. They know me. Um, a lot of them actually know me since I was a kid. Um, but again, it's just some bad apples that we have there that need to be weeded out. But other than that, I cannot say that. I have to say it's a systemic issue. Did you uh, did you graduate from Florida A&M? Yes, I did. What's your degree in? In healthcare management, in the minor in business administration. Okay. When did you graduate? Florida and Florida. Wow, Florida A and M University. No, I I knew that. I asked you when. What year? Oh, oh, I'm so sorry. Yeah. Um, 2014, 2013, 2014, 2013. Okay. I can't remember the year. You're a very proud rattler. Very much so. Okay. <laughs> Very good. I'll, I'll just I'll turn the floor back to Dan or to Pat for questions. Hey, um, quick question: you, you said policing has gotten better in uh, in in Boynton, and that's you know at, at, at street level, you know we'll, we'll we'll stipulate that's the case. Um, also, in September, the city manager, uh, a new city manager is hired, former police captain. Uh, one of the current city commissioners is the spouse of a police captain. Uh, two of the city commissioners who were elected last March uh, were elected with support from the police union. Do you worry that under the current regime, particularly since the hiring of the new city manager, the Boynton Beach Police Department may be able to kind of call its own shots too much in the city? No, actually, I think it's the bridge that we need to connect with the community. Um, the, um, the new city manager, Dan, is doing a great job. Um, he's already um, bringing back the community together by bringing back um, activities for the kids. The minute you do that, you're, you're changing the game right there with policing. Um, because you're teaching the next generation cops are not just here to go after black people. That's the first thing. Um, the second thing is he's gonna be the one to build the bridge between the community and the police. We can't just think somebody else is gonna come in and fix our problem. Dan is from the community. He lives in Boyne Beach himself. So he knows our issues, he knows our problems. So I feel like he would actually build that bridge between community and policing. Okay, thank you. Sorry again, guys. I'm a little bit nervous. Uh, <laughs> okay, uh, I understand, but uh, don't be. I mean, uh, I know we're, we're firing a lot of questions at you here this afternoon, yeah. but uh, but you're prepared, and so. Uh, Thank you, Pat. Thank you, Steve. Yeah, I want to ask you if you're familiar with something. There's a debate going on in Boynton Beach right now over maximum heights of buildings, how tall buildings can be. I think the current maximum height is 85 feet, and um, there are proposals to build buildings taller than that. What is your philosophy? What what would be your approach as a city commissioner about allowing exemptions to allow taller buildings to be built in the community? For those, for those, those type of buildings can be intrusive and sometimes they can be helpful. Right now we are going through a housing crisis. They could be good for us, but we have to call the community and let them know what we're doing. If the community do not want us to have anything higher, we're not going higher in my district. But if my community wants to go higher, we're going to go higher because I am going to be the spokesperson for district two. I'm not going to be the one that says, hey, we're going to do it my way. I'm going to bring the community involved. I'm going to bring the community leaders involved and I'm going to ask them for their opinion. And the reason I'm going to ask them for their opinion is because one, they're more knowledgeable in the situation than me. How they're more knowledgeable, they've been there longer than me. I'm a young guy that's trying to learn. So because of that, I'm going to bring them in and try to coordinate with them and the developer to see what we can find as a resolution for District 2. 
when you worked those five years for the Boynton Beach Public Works Department, tell us exactly the kind of work you did for the, for Public Works. Sure. Um, I, I, I was the admin. Um, it's, I was the Public Works Administrative Admin. Um, I, I basically heard complaints, phone calls regarding potholes, dr um, sinkholes, garbage, trash, utilities, as in um, water, lights, um, street lights being out, um, and all other maintenance, and also procurement of of new of new products like trucks. Um, new, just new, just new um, investments for the city that I was helped to acquire. I helped acquire. Um, it's, I hope I said it correctly. Uh, that's okay. Did, and did did you leave that position voluntarily, or did you leave under other conditions? No, I actually left voluntarily because I wanted to chase my dreams to actually run for commissioner. Um, when I re when I was on the C um, CRA advisory board, um, I asked I asked people for advice. Um, I asked them, hey. If I let's say if I did win commissioner, would I have to quit my job? They say, yeah, you would. You wouldn't be able to be a commissioner and work for the city of Boynton Beach at the same time. So I said, well, let me resign right now. So there is no conflict of interest. So people are not saying I did this at my job. I did that at my job because they're already going after me for the address. Um, so because of that, I said, you know, I want to chase my dreams. I am going to resign my position. But by the grace of God, I got a call from Delray off giving me an offer for chief parking administrator and is it is it okay with the city of delray beach uh that you get elected as an elected city commissioner in boynton beach no i haven't gotten to that far yet um i'm actually going to hr pretty soon to uh, i guess before it's, it's only if i'm elected but because i'm not elected i'm just doing this on my spare time um they wouldn't have to be involved but they are, they actually do know I'm running because they see my name everywhere. Sure. Okay. So it's kind of hard not to tell my boss I'm running. That's the whole idea. Very good. Yeah. <laughs> are you, are you, uh, we'll check, but I want to ask you, are you registered to vote at the address at the house you're living in? Is that where you're registered to vote? Yes. Um, I actually sent that over to um, Daniel, my qualifications okay. um, regarding that. But um, regarding the supervisor of elections, there have been a little bit of issues. So I'm trying to get everybody to re-put their information in because I guess they're doing a new sweep regarding driver's license, Social Security. So right now, I don't know what they're doing. You don't know what who's doing? Supervisor of elections. Um, everything, um, uh, Everything's changed. Um, for people to request their mail-in ballots now. Correct. They gotta, oh, I'm sorry. You guys no, know that's I'm sorry. I'm sorry. No, that's okay. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to interrupt you. You're absolutely right. I mean, basically, even if you've asked for an absentee ballot in past elections, you have to ask again for this election. And also, um, addresses have to be checked, too. Um, people right. are, because I guess the new system that they're doing, if you put in your driver's license um, and it's not connected, some people put their driver's license instead of their Social Security. So it's, it's with um, the supervisor of election explained it to us, but I'm not articulating it correctly. And I apologize for that. Oh, okay. It's all right. Okay. Uh, are you aware of an ordinance in the city of Boynton Beach, which basically, as I understand it, goes like this? Um, if you want, if you want to do business in the city of Boynton Beach and get, a, you need an occupational license uh, from City Hall. You need to basically establish yourself as a business. Mm -hmm. And one of the questions on the occupational license form is whether you, as the applicant for an occupational license, do you support or oppose a boycott of Israel? Some people are in support of boycotting Israel because of is Israel's policies over in the Middle East toward the Palestinians. Is it, does any of this ring a bell with you? It actually does because you actually have to fill it out. Um... My brother actually, he's a, he's actually a, uh, a mom and pop renter, I would call, um, a small business owner. So he actually have one of those licenses. Um, that I would have to review it because I'm going to be honest with you. I really, um, as Americans, I think we should stay in American business, not in other people's business, but I'm just an American because I wouldn't want us want another country coming in our business. 
Um, so for that, I'm more on the stance of I'm going to do what my country tells me and I'm going to follow my country. Okay. If you get elected to this position, what is your approach going to be about lobbying? What's going to be your attitude if a guy in a, you know, who's a registered lobbyist or a woman who's a registered lobbyist wants to meet with you and tell you about the virtues of, uh, they represent a developer who wants to build an apartment complex, wants to build a strip shopping center, uh, wants to build a small retail business. Uh, lobbying goes on all the time in most cities and towns, but different public officials have a different approach toward dealing with lobbyists. What would be your approach? Um, I, I'm a, I will be open to lobbying. And the reason I would be open to lobbying because some organizations uh, might want to be heard. Um, and I can't just ignore someone that want to be heard. Um, so I would be open to lobbying, but we need proper policy for lobbying. Um, we had a commissioner before I was, actually when I was born, he came to Florida in 1990. Um, when I was born in Bethesda, um, Commissioner Katz. Um, he has been lobbying, but Commissioner Katz, if you look at his record, he had FBI investigations. Um, when you are doing stuff like that, I think policies need to be addressed. Um, I just don't feel like it's right. I think policies should be addressed regarding lobbying. Okay. By the way, at the very beginning of this interview, uh, I wrote, jotted down, you made a passing observation. You said uh, issues, some issues are not being addressed in the city and people are, quote, people are not getting enough information, you said. what What is it that they're not getting information on and whose job is it to give it to them? Thank you so much, Pat. I'm Steve. Yeah. Um, so they, our current commissioners, they're not getting on social media new platforms to get the word out on new innovative stuff what the city's doing we're not doing that um they're not going into the community letting everybody know hey this is what we're thinking about doing this is what we need to this is um what i'm thinking we're not doing that the person's job to get this information out is the commission the commission should get the information out to his constituents um if that information is not going out there it's the commission's fault and i feel like my um commissioners they have not been they, they have not been agile to technology in reaching out to constituents, i.e. social media, um, YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, anything that you can use to get the word out. Because we do not have that much participation in Boynton Beach regarding our um, issues that are not being addressed. Sometimes residents just don't know. We don't get the information out to them. And what what are you going to do about that if you're elected? If I'm elected, I'm actually going to create a new platform, as in my um, district two will have a forum once a month that the city can come to and ask me questions. Um, um, constituents can come to and ask me questions or issues. Then I will also have a social media update every two weeks if we do have any issues or any new um, new opportunities to be blasted out to the constituents. I feel like we're not using technology the way we're supposed to in getting the word out. And I would be using technology a lot more to get the word out to my constituents. Okay. Have there been any forums of any kind where you and your opponents have been together on stage at the same time? Actually, no. Um, tonight will be the first night. We're having a forum at AME um, tonight. Uh, so this tonight will be actually the first uh, forum that we would all be the, uh, be there together. And you think you think your opponents are going to be there? Of course, you may have no way of knowing, but you expect them to be there? I expect them to be there because um, the community will be out there. Um, so they, they, they most likely will be out there because, again, um, they got to get their word out if they have a message for the community. Um, of the three candidates, the, the other three candidates in this race, which one do you consider to be your toughest competitor? Uh, I'm going to be honest with you. I don't even know. 
<laughs> um, the reason I say I don't even know is because we have someone in a different district that's attacking me regarding the address. So uh, I don't know if I'm going against um, David Katz, if I'm going against Matt McRae, if I'm going against Woodrow Hay or Bernard Wright. Um, again, this is the example of institutional racism because I have a white guy from a different district coming into my district saying, hey, you don't live here, why are you here? Um, when he has nothing to do with my district, instead of worrying about housing issues, he's worrying about me. Um, he's actually spending a lot of money to have people follow me. Uh, my mother's house has been watched. Uh, my brother's house has been watched. Um, because of that, my parents and my brother, they've been worried about me. They've, they've been having me drive their car, making sure if, you know, if a cop is on David Katz's payroll, don't pull me over and then something happens. So, um, so we've been very cautious of that because again, if someone from another district is very, is very interested in our district, there has to be something, there has to be something there. So I must be doing something right. If someone's spending a lot of money to find out a lot of information about me. So, uh, uh, there's, there's a lot to go through there. Uh, I'm sorry. I, I'm so no, sorry. that's okay. And I want to encourage my my colleagues may have heard something that I didn't hear as well. But but how do you know for sure that Mr. Katz has got you being followed? He actually went at first. I thought I was going crazy. I said to my brother, um, there's somebody following me. He's like, you're crazy. You're not that important. I'm sorry. I said, OK, so we're watching the commission meeting while we're door knocking on my phone. David Katz goes up to the podium and says they have been following my car. At six o'clock in the morning, my car is at my mother's house. At six o'clock in the afternoon, my car again is at my mother's house. How can my car be at my mother's house at six o'clock in the morning when I go to work at five in the morning, 5.45, actually at 4.45, I'm in the gym. And at five o'clock, 5.59, I'm done out at LA Fitness and I'm going to work at six o'clock. So my parents actually had a great idea of switching cars with me because he proved right there he was following me. Okay. This sounds like it might have been, and I'm not, I'm not justifying it, but it, and I, I'm trying to get the context here. This is all part of his attempt or others' attempt to make a case that you don't live where you say you live, right? Yes, but they could have actually did that with the CRA advisory board. Um, Woodrow Hayes, the one that actually appointed me to the CRA advisory board, they could have nipped it in the butt then. I see. Well, some people, if they feel they're being followed and there's no legitimate reason for them to be, be followed, I know this may not seem the, the necessary course you might take, but some people, I think, in that situation would notify the police. Did, uh, I see I see you smiling, uh, but, um, but, it's not, but it's not a smile of joy, uh, or I'm, is it? David Katz has been in Boynton Beach longer than me, since 1990. He's retired. He has time on his hands. I'm young. I'm black. I have locks. I'm in great shape. I'm six foot. I'm 220 pounds. Do you really think if I go to a cop and say, hey, an old white guy is following me, they're going to take that seriously? Well, maybe not, but but you've gone out of your way in this interview to, to make a distinction between racism in police generally and the fact that you have a, you have a high level of confidence in the Boynton Beach police leadership. You've said that I a do. couple of times. I do, but right now, because this is politics, I don't know what what this following part. I don't know if I if I can go to the cops or is this just politics? Um, I've never been the person that if I had an issue, I go to the cops immediately because I've never had issues with people. Um, I've I've always been a law abiding citizen instead of that one when I was 28 years old. Um, but other than that, I just didn't feel like going to the cops and saying, hey, David Katz is following me. They already know he's following me. Um, they actually told me, they said, Joe, somebody's actually following you right now. And I said, I know, um, the co me and the cops are, are in very good terms. It's just that I don't want to bring more problems to my family 
regarding someone that's been in the game longer than me than I've been alive. He's smarter than me. He's better than me. And the reason I say that is because he's been alive longer than me. So he knows right. more tricks. So he knows how to maneuver the legal system. Again, because you have been doing research when he had that FBI investigation. What person do you know pays a de developer back and gets no charges? When you hear about stuff like that, you get a little bit nervous. Okay. And 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 why? Why we've spent some time on this. Why why is he so ferociously opposed to you being on the city commission? Because he knows that um, the city's changing and he doesn't like that. He knows the city's growing and he doesn't like that in the sense of more people that look like me are actually getting involved into politics, are getting are getting involved actively. Um, so right now it is not a calm time for Mr. Katz because a lot of people that look like me are becoming more involved in their community. And that doesn't fit him well because he can't he can't lobby um, developers the way he used to. He can't tell developers, hey, if you want to work in the city, you got to come through me. He can't do that no more. But with the other commissions, with um, the other commissioners, he knows he still has a pipeline for District 2. If I come in, he doesn't have a pipeline for District 2. The constituents have the pipeline for District 2. I and he doesn't what want that. I understand what you're saying. And he, Mr. Katz is a lobbyist who represents developers in the city, right? You are, you know this better than me, Steve. No, I don't think so, but uh, I'm learning. I'm learning too. Okay. So you don't want to mess with a man's money. So that's what I'm learning in politics. And that's why uh, I really just want to stay away from the guy. I want to win and just, and just have him understand that the district is growing and we are an inclusive district. I have to ask you this question because you've and you've brought it up, and I appreciate you. We appreciate you uh, telling us uh, what you feel and what you uh, what you think believe you're seeing. But are you are you scared? Are you worried? Actually, no. I'm actually this feels like football. Um, I feel like I'm playing linebacker again, and I'm going against um, Tom Brady. Uh, uh, I never played against Tom Brady, but I watched him on TV. I feel like he's calling audibles on me. Um, I feel like he's going to go deep. But right now, I'm actually loving this new experience. I just wish um, I wasn't being attacked. I was just being, I would just, people would just ask me questions. Instead of saying stuff behind my back that I don't live in the district, come to my house. Let's have dinner together. Let's sit down and break bread. If you feel like I've done something wrong to you or you feel like I don't live in the district, just ask questions. I'll be happy to open everything up to you. You were a linebacker. Yeah, four-year Letterman in Park Vista. Did you play play football at FAMU? Well, Steve, uh, I actually had the opportunity to play walk-on, preferred walk-on for the Florida M University. But I wasn't told in college there is a big – the ratio between men and women in college is something I never knew. Um, a lot more girls are smarter than guys, so there's a lot more girls in college. So you get a lot, you get, you get uh, distracted from the parties, from everything new, being away from your parents. So uh, I had to stop playing football and get a job real quick. <laughs> okay. Well, we could, go, we could go on for a lot longer. Uh, no, thank you want... again, guys, for hearing me out. I really appreciate it. I know I didn't make sense on some of the questions because I'm a little nervous. It's my first rodeo. <laughs> I understand. All right. We might have some follow-up questions for you, but we know how to find you. Uh, you know, you gave us your phone number and stuff. <clears throat> Thanks a lot, Joe, for being on with us this afternoon. Good luck to you. Uh, thank you again, guys. Um, thank you very, very much. And I'm hoping um, that one misdemeanor does not go on the paper now because <laughs> that's something five years ago. <laughs> Okay, well, I, I just need to clear up between the questionnaire and, and what I found in court records. That's okay. That's, that's thank, just, thank you so much. Uh, our, um, okay, uh, the, the, uh, thank you very much. Um, I appreciate it, guys. Thank you again for taking the um time to just hear me out. And sure. Daniel, I'm sorry for sending you all my personal information. It's just, um, I just wanted you to know everything about me. It's fine, I'll, I'll make sure the uh, the, the folks uh, on the editorial board have that stuff as well. Thank you so much, guys. Thank you, thank thanks, you. Joe. Take care. Thank you.